Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and the main investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is Anita Walker, a longtime domain investor and the founder and CEO of SmartWebby.com, a consultancy providing startup consulting, design and development, and marketing services to global clients. Today, Anita and I talk about how a passion for mathematics and coding led her and a partner to start a full service marketing consultancy. Anita also shares how specializing in naming and branding led her down the path of accidental domain investing in 2013, having first sold .org, .me, and .club domains. She also discusses her rookie pricing mistake leading to a three-year sales drought and how she's course corrected since this time by mastering squadhelp.com contests to sell domain names. And last but not least, Anita shares how one unassuming compliment from a domain legend helped her to battle and overcome depression. So with that, Anita, welcome and thank you for making time to join us today. Hi, Alvin. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, certainly. And so to kick things off, Anita, let's share with the listeners a bit about yourself at a high level, who you are, your personal and professional background. Okay, I'm uh, uh, 43 years old, and I'm going to turn 43 in a few days. 43? <laughs> yeah. And no, there's no way you're 43. Oh, my gosh. I would have yeah, said, so- no joke, had you asked me, I would have probably said, hey, you know what? probably 30s and lo- and lower okay. 30s at that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> you don't look like it at all and so so you have an engineering background and yeah. then like so so what do you do uh today? I've been running a small web web development company for the past 20 years and I've been really a very tiny tiny entrepreneur and a tiny domainer now. So <laughs> that's uh, probably my profile. I do um I'm like kind of like a jack of all trades. I do design, development, uh, project management, everything. You know, I I probably I call myself a, a pioneer, a full stack developer because I do everything. <laughs> Same so here. I, I I I guess we were we were around bef- before the term got coined, also, right? <laughs> so. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's 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 interesting. It's like you and I really likely have a similar lifestyle um at least a professional journey if you will just on two different sides of of the earth yeah i in fact a lot of my uh, clients were always from us uk and they never even guessed that i was an indian you know from my name <laughs> they probably thought i'm uh, american or uh, uh, <laughs> English person staying in India, I don't know. But they used to say that you don't sound like an Indian at all. Your name is not Indian. So it's probably, I mean, served you well, though. Yeah, I love my name. (laughs) (laughs) And so then, I mean, now how in the world did, I guess, in in terms of your journey, so you, you went to college. Now, how did you, did? were you introduced to tech at a very early age? So was this something... That was Uh, like, hey, in your teenage years or what? Yeah, so I have been a hardcore programmer, more than a designer and and even an engineer, right? So I started uh, coding when I was 13 years old. And how did you get introduced to coding? Uh, in school, we had we had uh, computers and we had uh, you know flowcharts and I was I was very good in maths, so it was very natural for me to get into programming. So uh, one of those uh, math mathematic minds that are sharp nuts, then. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I I I was a nerd for a long long time, you know. Even you know, see like an interview like this or. Talking to people kind of used to make me nervous. I, I'm more of a <laughs> stuck to my keyboard kind of a person. So. Right. And but then I'm assuming then so likely is the case, obviously, for you to be successful in business at some point, we've got to step away from uh, the keyboard. And so yeah. so you started at 13. And then like, when did you realize that this is what you wanted to do as a living or did it just somehow just kind of happen? Actually, I wanted to, uh, my dream job was actually to be a detective, CBI detective, but I, <laughs> I didn't even try, you know, so. <laughs> so Whoa, wait, wait. Yes. <laughs> so good in mathematics, but you wanted to be a detective. Like you, you can't just yeah. drop that there and then not explain. So like what, See, what, what in drew India, you in to. India, in India, it's not encouraged, you know, it's not like, 
it's not like a great career choice and i think it's a dangerous career right so <laughs> But but I mean, like, did you know anybody that was a detective or was... Uh, my my grandfather was an inspector. He was in police. OK. Yeah. And so that was the I, only person. Yeah, I didn't want to. I, I guess out of all the grandchildren, I was the only one who was kind of inclined towards police and all. But um, uh, it, it didn't have a good kind of a because I was good in maths and uh, I got into engineering. It was just assumed that I'm going to be in, you know, IT. So, ah, OK. Okay. So, so that a dream never lived then. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so uh, it's like people are crazy about football and baseball and basketball and all those things. Right. So probably that's what they wanted to do for me. I kind of binge on uh, all sorts of detective serials and all those things. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Anita Holmes, AKA Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So then, like you said, started coding at 13, then get done with high school, then enter into college. Now, once you graduated, I guess, had you started your your business yet or when did? No, no, no. So uh, as soon as I finished, I had a friend who was into web design and uh, their company was also a small company and they were looking for a developer. And because my project was in um, uh, vb.net and it had a little bit of asp and all so they interviewed me and within 10 minutes i had the job how long did you I, work for that company only six months <laughs> what yeah so i after six months i started smart Webby. wow so you you started there six months into it then kind of what what was the mindset i mean was it one of those things of you were like yeah, this is fun. I like what I'm doing, but I want to do something else or I just want to do this on my own. Like, what was your thought process? When you get into a small company, I mean, you're getting exposed to everything, right? You're getting exposed to the design, the programming, you're seeing all sides of it, the database development. So within six months, I was pretty much well-versed with how websites work, you know? So I felt I was ready. And my friend, uh, both of us got out and we started smartwebby.com. Ah, so you had some, so at least you had someone else along, along the yeah. journey with you. And it wasn't just you being yeah. uh, the, the, the lone ranger, if we will, uh, yeah. by yourself, striking out by yourself. That's awesome. And so you all started out now kind of going back to you saying, you know, Hey, you were good at math. You definitely stayed more behind the keyboard. Like how did you break away from the keyboard and actually start doing business? It was, or was that one of the things of your friend was probably more of a people person or was it a, a skill that uh, both of you had to learn? We had to learn. Uh, see, I've been an online entrepreneur for 20 years. So there's, you don't really need to really uh, mingle with people or a pitch for projects, right? We were really lucky. Within a year, we started getting so many projects, you know? So it was a blessing. Ah. And um, so I So it guess, was based on, on, on likely the quality of work that you produce then. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So Got it. Uh, we, we took, I mean, we took uh, website design and programming and uh, I also developed apps, you know? Uh, those, those days kind of apps, so it was all flash-based, you know? I had a- right. Uh, I had a poll, a survey, those kind of tiny apps right. that you can you can plug into your website. And initially, those those did quite well. <laughs> they, yeah, they did. They did. I do. I do remember them quite well. Um, and and like I said, that was before the the days of iOS and Android apps. Um, yeah. And it was just a different. Uh, what was it? I want to say they were like applets. If I remember, components, you know, it's like yeah. just like a co component you can plug into your site, and you know, it, like a, with a tiny admin panel, you can add the widget into your site, right? Widgets. Definitely. So you all then pretty much started building this business, and it was all based on really the quality of work. So your 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 clientele is actually growing, or your customer base is growing, really then by word of mouth. At the same time, I guess, as more and more projects came on, now, did you have to go out and hire people? Yeah, we had a couple of uh, designers and uh, that's it. We, we never, um, till we actually got into template development, we were uh, initially when Template Monster was very small, we were one of its competitors. Really? So, you know, yeah. So we, we were a very tiny competitor of uh, Template Monster. 
Wow. So then you all started developing templates and, and why now, yeah. why did you choose that path? We had a client who, for whom we developed his entire site. And that time Dreamweaver was, was uh, the top tool to develop your website on. So he started us off on the templates and we, we created our own templates after that. So it was a little, not necessarily on purpose as much as it was just a, a serendipitous moment of meeting someone who then kind of put you on a, on a different path. Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, we already knew about uh, templates, how well they were going. And because he started off with our work and he was uh, coming back to us for more and more templates, we knew that our quality is good, our code is good. That's interesting. And, and the world then just really begin to change. Uh, CMSs yeah. begin to change to where, and I, and I believe it's more, while it is a bit of technology advancing, it's also just a bit of the desire of the customer wanting to be able to, you know, have things that are more simple in nature, simple and easy to use. While at the same time, I, I guess with, with the template, the template world, if you will, it's, it's, People want it to be able just to grab something off the shelf, be able to add their logo to it, change a few colors and off to the races with, you know, their sites. And so uh, that that actually then you were well positioned uh, yeah. for for that, because that is definitely the world in which we which we come from. Although today it's probably very much, I guess, more of a online versus Back then it was online, but it was really more like, hey, you pull and download the template, you make your changes, then you put it out versus today. It's really, you know, everything is right there online. You're making instantly. your changes instantly um, and you're seeing everything. Uh, and so that's that's interesting. So you then you so Smart Webby really became custom development. Then you focused on templates and themes. And now I guess today, like what types of services do you provide? Still the same, but I, um, for, for a period of maybe um, five, six years, I uh, I wasn't very happy with just doing templates that were kind of getting out of fashion. You know, I'm very, very perfectionist, you know, so I didn't want to, <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to sell them, even if they're selling for $20 or $40, whatever mm. it is, you know, I didn't want want to sell something that is obviously of comparatively lower than Template Monster and all. And they just zoomed ahead with their uh, hundreds and hundreds of developers, right? So um, I feel that one of my biggest downfalls as a entrepreneur is being too perfectionistic, you know. So every every uh, dozen of templates would be, you know, it'll take two months to release, and you know, it, it was a very small team. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, because because to a certain extent, I mean, the the world then, especially in that lane, really started moving around more agile, just in time, iteration based to to where it was like, okay, well, let's get as many of these things out there as we can, and then we'll patch yeah. them as needed or add features to them as needed on just this consistent turn. Um, and that and that is, I, I can I can def definitely sympathize with you there in terms of the bit of being a perfectionist. It's it's certainly perfectionists aren't made for that type yeah, uh, of environment. So, yeah. So my my special uh, specialty has always been corporate websites. You know the ah. corp corporate clients uh, they don't like uh, all these CMSs and all, right? So mm -hmm. they bring us their specific uh, requirement and they want a site that is totally different from what's available on templates and all those things so right and now yeah, I, I, and do they do most most of your corporate customers do they hire you then to manage it as well or yes, is that yeah, that they have yeah. their team they sometimes uh, i mean when we tell them that uh, it's very easy you just uh, need to have a copy of dreamweaver and you can handle it yourself we kind of encourage them to learn how to handle their own sites because many times they're small startups and not really big companies, you know. So, uh, or, or there'll be company which are uh, small to medium size, right? So, less than 100 employees. So, why would you want them to have a big budget and spend a lot on maintaining the sites and all? So, right. we, are very co we were very uh, known for being very co cost efficient. Ah, and so then that all uh, that also works to your favor, and to a certain extent, you've settled into this lane of working with startups, if you will, that likely grow into pretty good size. Um, that and probably they become, I would imagine, repeat customers along the way. 
some of them do come back after 10 15 years to and right. you know do you remember me but i don't really remember anyone so. <laughs> oh my goodness and so then you start down the path uh you and a friend with smart webby and then now in terms of domain names obviously i can see the intersection here quite clear uh in terms of obviously working with web building websites so you're going to all you're going to intersect with domains just in general but then for you now you're also a domain investor and so when did you start domain investing and how and what what happened that you know you had that light bulb moment of like hey wait a minute i can actually probably make a living at this too so i have a way of uh... I would say it's an accidental uh, accidental domainer kind of a story too like <laughs> just like what you said but I feel that I was pretty dumb you know that <laughs> I I could have been a millionaire by now but <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> the domaining fairy just crossed me 100 times <laughs> I never I never saw it right so <laughs> yeah so I uh, I think I had always had this um, because smart webby was my first uh, registration in 2000 december so we found it very difficult to get a good name you know so i always had this uh, because uh, 2000 was the height of the dot com bubble right so right. since we had such a tough time getting a good name we felt i always felt that getting a good name is very difficult all the good names are taken you know we all make these assumptions very easily uh, without even you know uh, seeing if there are good names or not right right so, right uh i i have had clients with crazy names they don't even make sense you know so i'll be like okay fine you know the and i wasn't really aware of a, a domain industry I, i of course knew that there were people buying and selling but uh, like i said the fairy would have flown over me but <laughs> i didn't even turn turn and look at it right so uh i think around uh, 2012 all my purchases were related to the business right so uh i got kind of the accidental uh, discovery about domains was uh, actually it came from my survey product and i i had got a cease and des- uh, desert um, email from a guy who owned uh, smart-survey.com so my survey was called S- smart survey so he's like this i uh, this name i, I don't want to use it i don't want you to use it kind of a thing so right Yeah so I I was pretty shocked first because I've been using smart survey smart poll for uh, many years till then you know? so I was like what is he even saying and then when I started <laughs> when I started researching I actually saw that there were two three other products having the same smart poll smart this one and then I I felt so bad and I was like what you know how did how wasn't I aware of this IP thing and I'm pretty sure in 2000 if I had just done a little bit of research and you know i would have definitely hand registered smart poll and smart survey and all or at least i would have had some awareness that uh, these names are already taken for whatever reason you know so when that happened i kind of became little aware that domains play a very important role and i had a, i think our tagline was best web solutions or something like that and there was a email i remember a guy trying to sell me bestwebsolutions.com so i was like <laughs> this this kind of started tying in with my concept that okay i'm not doing a good job you know smart i have just one site and i'm not protecting my products and so then i bought i think in 2007 i must have bought interactapps.com interact app and uh, sorry interact uh, poll interact survey so i thought okay even if i can't use smart let me do this so those were uh, kind of like a defensive registration kind of a thing and then uh, slowly towards 2012 i don't know how i stumbled across uh, rick's blog but that was the eye opener for me you know because uh, the way he writes you know it's, <laughs> you know it, it, it's kind of a shocking way right the way he writes and uh, he's very sarcastic <laughs> so i i literally loved his uh, the way he wrote because it's kind of the way my personality is though, though i don't openly talk like that i felt that he <laughs> he was speaking my language you know so right i started reading his articles and i was i was really blown away and he kept iterating that please don't say that there are no good domains you know right. there are there are good domains you know and i was like 
okay, let me try this. And what actually turned me towards domaining is I initially I was just doing my own little bit of my own research. When I wrote to him, he actually replied to me in 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes, I was re- like really shocked, you know. So wow. He, he, so he's the domain king. <laughs> yeah. So you so you wrote Rick Schwartz after reading his ricksblog.com and then he actually responded back to you in like 10 minutes. Yeah. And so did you have questions for him or was it what what was kind of the basis of I, that email? I don't I don't really remember but I remember he uh, he was very uh, helpful when I ca- kind of start uh, asked him that uh, I'm trying to learn domaining can you uh, just look at uh, these domains and also he he would say like you know keep looking it it, it just mm. would be two three words reply it it w- wouldn't be more than a sentence i i don't remember him ever <laughs> writing more more than a sentence you know so i did uh, because i have a branding background and because i've always helped you know a client if i don't like their uh, domain i've always told them this is rubbish you know and i would uh, give them two three other options which are better and i've never charged for that you know but always uh, was very aware about the dot com thing and why you should never have another extension until unless you're an organization or so all those things were always clear for me when i started uh, researching and getting into it funnily uh, the my first three sales actually were all do- uh, non dot coms so i was uh, kind of like uh, i thought that i had a good uh, good uh, handle on the way to pick domains but that was not the thing it kind of uh, twisted the way i started looking at domaining you know i started thinking that all my domains are uh, 10000 and above uh, ah. I, that, that's the price i should get you know so uh, <laughs> so, so i kind of um, because i uh, took that kind of twist of it i wasn't focusing on domaining it was just a side uh, hustle kind of a thing and from uh, 2013 uh, thir- yeah 2013 was my first sale that was a dot org then uh, second sale was a dot me and then third sale was a dot club actually it was a one word dot uh, club so i started feeling that the dot coms i have are worth way above 5k or 10k or whatever and i, I never priced them at anything below 10k you know so that was my rookie mistake i think and <laughs> I, I always uh, thought from uh, <laughs> from Rick's, uh, I guess his, you know, maximum uh, price kind of a viewpoint, right. kind of a thing. You know, I wasn't very, yeah, very realistic about the pricing. So, see, when when you don't get sales, I feel that's when you kind of wake up. You know, so the next three next three years, I didn't have any sale. So I was like, what is happening? I have these uh, two that time I had around uh, two fifty domains or something, and wow. uh, maybe hundred hundred were my own use one so 150 i was just re- renewing it and i was like what am i even doing you know so there has to be something wrong in what i'm doing if i'm not getting any <laughs> inquiries or you know so i i started uh, dropping domains and the funny thing is in a few years i a few uh, months i started seeing that all of them were getting picked by huge domains and you know other oh no uh, yeah so i knew that it's not that i don't know how to pick i don't know how to sell you know i'm not selling ah. i'm not selling right i'm not pricing them right so 2018 i had to finally take a call what am i doing you know what am i doing with this uh, portfolio of domains and uh, uh, we had a group uh, of indian domainers that's when i joined that group one of them they they called me uh, you're also a domainer or something some comment i said i'm not a do- domainer i'm a, <laughs> i'm a developer yeah and i was like <laughs> <laughs> she and said I, how dare you call me that <laughs> no because see that's the reality i'm not uh, so active in domaining right so i'm just a developer and i kind of uh, started thinking what what am i doing with all these neither am i developing it neither am i selling them so it's uh, time to shake shake things up and right. that's that's when i started moving my uh, all my domains from uh, uni registry to dan i was getting a little bit of a parking income on uni registry maybe 1000 dollars or something over the past uh, couple of years and that was also from just two three domains it wasn't much i moved from uni registry to dan and then i had a, a couple of small sales 
and then i was like still still i wasn't sure of what what am i doing because i i neither did outbound i didn't know how to find uh, buyers for my domains and they were all uh, mostly brandables there were two words and because i'm a branding person i'm a brand, <laughs> uh, i'm an uh, so my, i was heavy on names that can be used for startups or generic kind of uh, two word you know so i i wasn't obviously putting them in the right market or in the right price bracket so i started uh, becoming more realistic about my prices i started coming down to 1 1.5k to 3k i started keeping uh. them there then i found squad help and incidentally i had already signed up with them but you know the way my brain works it's very <laughs> scatterbrained you know so i i had no idea that i had even signed up with them you know i would <laughs> I was like then I put a put for, forgot password and they sent me the this one I said my account is not activated I I guess that's why I just I thought okay when it gets activated then I'll get on to the site 2019 I started squad help contest I started listing my domains and a few months I kind of struggled but I feel I really developed as a brander you know because you know you have this uh, mindset about yourself you think you know so much but you know when people <laughs> when, when people don't select your names when they right. don't they don't uh, give your names as uh, you know love it and uh, so i started changing the way i started looking at things and how how they are approaching it how they are looking at it and started separating the different type of brand names and started uh, upgrading my portfolio you know throwing away all the uh, bad names and right. you know i i ha- i had to force myself actually because i knew that i had i ha- i was in the red uh, apart from whatever i had earned in the initial uh, see the the lucky thing that what I, when i got into domaining you uh, if you remember in 2012 13 uh, godaddy coupons dollar 1 and dollar 2 coupons were a lot yeah know, a lot lot I, how how i missed them how i missed yeah. them yeah so i feel that my um my learning curve what it it kind of was uh, not very expensive the way it's expensive now right then right. uh, when, when they're learning if they're not if they don't get in with knowledge they can easily burn their fingers whereas right. um, i think uh, the first 2 3 years i was already in profit you know so i was like oh fine this is anyway part of the profit and i wasn't bothered but once i started getting into the red i was like what the hell am i doing you know why am i wasting <laughs> money and and of course my dad and my brother and all they they, they have no clue what i'm doing you know so <laughs> they're like why are you wasting your money in all this you know i was like no i have a, a good portfolio i couldn't explain to them what i'm doing you know so i right. should just i should just keep quiet you know because uh, see when you're an entrepreneur for so many years and uh, your mindset is different from people around you who are used to a paycheck and you know they're used to their luxuries and you know right well probably, and it, it, and they're not they're the risk averse exactly yeah it, so i i have a huge risk appetite and because of that i couldn't explain it like you know they probably thought i'm addicted to uh, paying these bills or whatever but i was like no i can't let go of them i know i know their value when you know the value of uh, the names you have you kind of try to keep other things in the background other uh, luxuries in the background and try to pay for these uh, domains and all right so right. Um, that's what was happening <laughs> and and then, and then finally i s- suddenly started selling uh, domains on uh, squad help and it, i was so relieved i was like thank god i'm not a bad domain <laughs> i'm not a, i'm not a terrible do- i mean at least i can call myself a domain finally you know so <laughs> so that yeah. that's interesting you know thinking back to it and you said it earlier and i never i guess two and two really never connected for me of how just over the years obviously of being an entrepreneur but really like you said you although yes you're into code you're full stack developer but you you really had a knack in terms of branding and it was a matter of you tried literally like all of us probably stumble across Rick's blog i remember stumbling across Rick's blog uh Elliot Silver's blog domaininvesting.com domain name wire with Andrew Alleman and just domaining in general and dn journal with Ron Jackson so all of these publications you know you stumble across and 
What's interesting to me is that we, I think we all somewhat kind of do the same thing, especially like you stumble across a Rick, you see his success and you sort of emulate that, even if it's, even if it's just a percentage. So he's selling million dollar names and we're kind of like, well, our names are at least 15,000, 20,000. And it's not until, and some people either they, they hold on to that theory and then it's kind of like, oh, wow, the bill just starts to mount and the snowball effect happens in the wrong direction in terms of doing like renewals. And it's like, I call it the renewal monster. Renewal monster comes knocking on the door. And next thing you know, you got a couple hundred domains that you got to figure out how in the heck am I going to pay for these things? And then in your case, though, I very few seldom ever make the uh, adjustment that you did. And so you, it was the hard adjustment of saying, I'm going to let these go. You did. And then you saw huge domains, then pick them up, which is kind of one of those things of like, Oh, I actually had the right domain, but I did not realize about pricing. Mm -hmm. And so it's like these two worlds of pricing and sales meet up with branding. And then for you, the trifecta was that squad help came along. And (laughs) that's what tied it together for you. Because like I said, I I never would have said, I I don't think I would have honed in until you told that story. And I was like, oh, there's the connection between um, you. You actually refined your ability to brand and squad help actually help you do that um, a bit, a a bit more concise, a bit better in terms of pricing and name selection, which now, you know, likely leads you into the black in terms of no longer while the names you had were probably good they probably would have been priced lower in terms of like probably the one to two thousand dollars and probably had you priced them there you you probably would have realized you know more sales and so um now in terms of your efforts today uh like do you participate in any auctions do you hand register domains like how do you like kind of what's walk us through your process so now i'm a little bit more cautious to buy because um because I have too many names and I, <laughs> I, I, I forget what I have. So I have, I, I mean, see, each of us have a personality. We have uh, negatives and positives. So if we are very self-aware, we can build around our positives and, right. you know, try to compensate for the negatives, right? So because I have a bad memory and I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm really literally all over the place, you know, <laughs> I'm a single mom to two kids and, you know, so I, I have really no clue sometimes what I'm doing. Until, unless there's a, <laughs> there's a project, there's a plan and there's a deliverables and dates. I can stick to those kind of a thing. But when I'm on my own, so I have kind of a ha- hazy kind of a yeah. recollection, recollection of what I have. So though I pick really good names, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not really good at um, showcasing them immediately, putting them on after Nick. And, you know, I don't have a kind of a proper system that's in place where I, uh, and I'm learning from a lot of my friends in the industry who, you know, they do it immediately. They buy a right. name, they put it up, they put it on after neck, they put it on. I don't have any system like that. I have probably out of my uh, 900 names, I think I must have bought 400 in the past year, you know, from oh, really? I'm, I'm kind of reinvesting whatever I have made. So I've, I've not yet listed them anywhere, you know, so it's, I don't know. I have no explanation for it. It's just a failure of, a, you know, so. Well, but, but then you also, I think it also points back to, and this is probably a critical point here for, for the listeners is that the reality and the importance to a certain extent of having another source of income in terms of a yeah. smart webby. And so it's kind of like you have that source of income that to a certain extent allows you uh, to be a little more lax in terms of of domain investing, not that that that's a bad thing, yeah. But yeah. I think it would be a bad thing if you didn't have this other source of income. Um, you would definitely have to be a bit more finite in terms of saying, okay, well, with the nine hundred names, how do we uh, increase our sell through rate? How do we get you know uh, optimal exposure? 
for all of these names or a portion of these names. And so I think it's a matter of a, they go, they both go hand in hand. And I think that it, that it works to a certain extent, you know, because there, I believe that likely is the case that smart webby still plays a great role in terms of driving likely your investment strategy, because you're still coming across new customers, new projects, new thoughts, new ideas that are likely leading you. Little do you realize in in terms of the subconsciousness of being able to select names um, for your investment portfolio. See, I have never had any problems selecting names because I have lists of thousands of names, available names. I can really? guarantee you that I can prove that hand registration is not dead. You know, because that's how I pick so many names that are better than what comes up in auctions and what comes up. Like, for example, if I look at an auction, which is like uh, $69 on drop catch, Mm -hmm. you know, I I look at that auction, I look at that rate of $300 and I see what can I buy better than this name for $10. <laughs> so really I actually, so how do, yeah, how do you I, put your list together then i'm like for people that can do it i can't do it so it i just kind of i look and i'm i'm in awe of like how in the world are you able to put these words together in such a way and i get at the bare basic minimum it's like yeah i get the hey matching up words but in terms of what goes through your mind like how like help us understand in terms yes, of anita's strategy see, <laughs> See, though though I am a hard code coder, I I feel that I am more of a designer and more of a brander because I have a more of a overall kind of a look, you know. So when you're a when you're kind of focusing on design, it's like um, the first step is the name, you know. You're branding the name, you know. So that's the most important thing. So when I've always kept it as the most important thing. Automatically, I'm good at the name, right? Looking at the name, branding right. the name, uh, doing the logo for the name, doing the website. Then only everything follows it, right? So since I've always uh, been aware that the name is the most important thing, my brain has always been able to come up with uh, all sorts of names, you know, all sorts of combinations, all sorts of... I guess it's... Uh, some people can say it's lucky, but I feel that it's just the way that I'm built, you know? Right. Because... Um, it's just your natural the, thought process. Yeah, I think the first uh, this might this might be an interesting uh, point is b- the first naming contest I won was when I was uh, fourteen years old. So <laughs> I had uh, I had named our neighborhood church group for kids. You know, so really? yeah, so I had got a tiny little prize for it. I'd call, I would called, I named the group uh, Little Lambs Club. Yeah, so it Little was, Lambs it was, Club. So that's interesting. Yeah. So really early on, that's kind of the, the, the first sign. And that's one of the things that I, that I share with folks that often ask me, well, hey, where should I start in terms of investment and uh, investing into domains? And I'm like, well, one, you want to stay close to home in terms of your expertise. And right. little, that's in, that's an interesting tidbit there that you won a naming contest early in life. And now to kind of see how, you know, years later, years down the path, here you are. And that's essentially what you're doing in terms of, uh, yeah, that was of the squad first help. And, that- <laughs> yeah, that, that's interesting. And that, and one interesting that you see it because oftentimes I don't think a lot of folks know exactly what they're good at or what they're not good at and so in in the domain industry and i'm pretty sure you can attest to this like it it is real easy to start chasing what sold Uh, meaning like you see oh this name sold and next thing you know you just start buying names based on this one given instance of a name selling or two or three given instances of a name selling, not really having a strategy. And then it's kind of like you end up zigging and zagging all over the place, Mm. not having done anything, but wasted probably time and money behind something that is, you know, while we think it's five or 10 or $15,000, it's like, yeah, it's maybe $200, you know, sub $500 at best. And so I think that that's interesting that you're able to see that naming and branding is your thing and that you found the platform because like you said you don't necessarily uh not that you don't exclusively list to uh after nick or won't list on after nick but you found squad help which is 
out of as far as I'm concerned, out of the industry. Um, I mean, obviously there is brand bucket, but in terms of what you're doing in naming contests, like you could probably do that all day on squad help um, yeah. and make a living so, doing it. So uh, squad help, I feel it kind of fills the gap that I was looking for. You know, I, I wanted to reach end users, but neither am I an outbound specialist. You know, actually, squad. I, I, to put it in one sentence, squad help developed what I wanted to develop. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. awesome. So, uh, see, another thing is the awareness of the branding thing. I think it co- kind of caught up with me because uh, I had this uh, period of six years of excruciating um, turmoil that I went through, and uh, I couldn't, I couldn't program. You know, so it was like the rug getting pulled from under my feet, you know, and uh, I was, I was just so much in, um, you must have heard of PTSD, right? Yeah. Post traumatic. And I went through PTSD and depression and, you know, people actually, my family members were like, is this really you? They couldn't, they couldn't understand because I, I, I'm actually a borderline workaholic. I can work even 20 hours a day, even, you know, just sleeping for two hours and eating for, you know, two hours. My you know, goodness. So, yeah. So, so seeing that sort of a crazy person and going into someone who just can't sit in front of the, I, I just couldn't sit, sit in front of the laptop. I couldn't do it. If a logo design or a website design uh, project comes, I'm able to deliver. But I just couldn't touch Smart Webby. Uh, Smart Webby had become like a 700 uh, page site and it was, you know, you can just wow. ima- imagine how overwhelming it must be when I'm not able to program. I'm not able to pull back the site and, you know, Panda hit all these crazy things. Uh, one by one started bringing the ranking down because uh, I used to li- write a lot of articles about design and programming and JavaScript and PHP. All sorts of things used to be on Smart Baby. And every time I look, looked at Smart Webby, I used to feel depressed. You know? so <laughs> I, I, I kind of just avoided doing any work on Smart Webby. And that kind of just brought, back the, brought down the ranking more and more and more. Right. So I, I came to a place where I, I just had to take responsibility for what I was doing. And, you know, I had to acknowledge that the previous Anita is someone else. You know, I can't keep desiring her to come back you know so right, i was right. like okay okay so what so what you can't if if you're not there that does not mean you're you're not here you know you need, need to be here you know so i started focusing on design and luckily something kind of uh, triggered about this uh, domaining thing because i remember rick once he just mentioned that you know you know how to pick names that's it it's just a tiny little compliment from someone whom you have never met never seen but who you think is the king of domaining right so i was like these are not bad names i'm not gonna drop them no matter what you know no matter even if the sky is falling on my head i'm not gonna (laughs) drop these names so i i stuck to my guns and i um i knew that domaining is the way some something just told me that this is what is gonna get you out of this crap you know whatever you're going through you know you have to stick on to these domains so I stuck to my guns. I concentrated on designing and I uh, did a little bit of soul searching writing. I just started writing and writing and writing. I, uh, I'm, I'm actually like a closet poet. You know, I have uh, documents with thousands and thousands of poems, you know. So I write and write and write and I finally pulled myself out of the depression and the PTSD. And I've never been more happier in my life. Then I'm now, you know, so that is awesome. That is awesome. And I think I mean, I think that that that's a testament, um, obviously, in terms of uh, I think that we we all can can find ourselves getting there in terms of whether that's uh, work or whatever we throw ourselves into is that we, we do and can reach a limit. And to that to that extent, not only a limit, but an unhealthy limit that we have to back away, that we have to take some time off, that we have to, so to say, hit the reset button, you know, reconnect with who we were made to be um, and who we were meant to be. And so, you know, it's like, man, I'm glad that you were able to do that. And then at the same time, it's interesting what happens when we live in community. And I think that that's the interesting thing about the domain investing community is that 
we are truly a connected community, a global community at that. And I think your your story about Rick uh, just sharing one simple compliment that that likely may not have meant anything to him, but it meant the world to you and brought you out of a place of of hopelessness, if you will. And that's the that's the thing that that I feel that we all get the opportunity to do is to be able to to share with one another, to be able to uh, encourage one another. And so it's like the the very thing that I look to do in terms of this podcast is to be able to share people people's stories. It's like, you know, it's easy for folks to likely go to LinkedIn and look up Anita Walker and they think, oh my gosh, she has this life of perfection, this life of no worry, this life uh, of, you know, no challenge, if you will. And, and that it's easy for people to place uh, people like you, people like me on a pedestal, if you will. And, mm-hmm. and But the reality is we're real people. We have issues. We have challenges. See, I would, I would, uh, you know, what I really love about myself is I always lead with my failures. You know, I know. <laughs> exactly. I, I know that I'm, I'm not a great entrepreneur. I'm not money driven. You know, nothing is ever kind of like, you know, I need this house, I need this car. I've never had anything like that in my life. All I wanted to do was work at what I love. You know, if if my work is giving me happiness, that's enough for me. You know, just job satisfaction is all I've looked for. Uh, similarly, as a domainer, I know I'm a very tiny domainer. You know, the the guys that you see, you know, probably what I've sold in one, one and a half years, they would be making in, in one sale, right? So being very self-aware of uh, where I stand keeps me grounded, you know. I know that I have a lot to, lot more to achieve and, you know, there's there's so much more I need to give to, give to the world, you know. So uh, that keeps me more and more excited about what I do and my ideas. I have like um, maybe uh, two, three dozen you know, ideas that are not developed, you know, they're all in, do- <laughs> they're all in documents. I- I- I'm sure all the IT people, you know, whoever's listening to it, they will have at least four ideas that they had it for so many years, but, but then so- someone else comes along and develops it, right? So ideas are uh, plenty, but who, who sits and develops it? So right. I feel, I feel domaining has really given me the opportunity to finally focus on what I want to do, what I, the legacy I want to leave behind. You know, I don't want to be a work horse, the, the, what I was all these years, even, right. though, it, even though it looks uh, very uh, nice and entrepreneurs are a glamorous uh, tag. But uh, basically, we are a workhorse. The, the, we are a service provider. You know, we're sitting and we're just delivering and delivering and delivering whatever the condition of our, uh, you know, mental or physical thing. All that doesn't matter. The client is the boss, right? So you just deliver, deliver, deliver. So I came to a point where I started struggling with what am I doing? You know, mm. a, a lot. Of, and I gave myself the time to figure out what am I doing? Where am I going? You know, what do I want out of life? I've always been very aware that riches don't impress me at all. I want to be a peaceful person. I want to be there when my children grow up, you know. So a lot of people don't realize that uh, the opportunity that entrepreneurs have to be a full, full-time full parent and a full-time business person is huge. Right. You know? Many people don't have that. You know, they struggle. They uh, miss out on many of their kids' milestones. So. I feel I um, I term success in a totally different way than what the world would look at. And I'm happy to be like that because I'm, I'm there for my kids. I'm doing what I love. I really love whatever I'm doing. You know? So <laughs> whether it's programming and, and by the way, the, the rug that got pulled under my uh, feet, it, it, it just like, you know, after I started becoming this great uh, hidden writer, <laughs> You know, all of a sudden I could program, you know, so it's a, it's a beautiful uh, way God has created our brain. We don't know what, we don't know what affects it. You know, I used to always think that I'm such a strong person. I can get over anything. When I realized about this depression and the way that it hit me, I was not, I was not willing to acknowledge it for many years. You know, I was like, you know, no, that's not me. That's not me. You know, when you, when you kind of avoid it, then you are not actually addressing the problem, right? Exactly. took a lot of time for me to acknowledge it, face it, and then heal from it. I f- well, and then not only that, having the the ability to to be vulnerable and even sharing it uh, yeah. uh, with right. people, because I think oftentimes it, it's the facade that's out yeah. there that 
that you know we we see people but do we truly see people do we really understand a person's struggle really at the human level of like strip everything away and yeah. i'm like man that's the that's the uh the the beauty in terms of your journey is, is realizing no that you've had these struggles that that yes okay you had to get help but at the same time i'm like man it's there to me, there is uh, the uh, the liberation of yeah. of having gone through it, of having acknowledged it, have having received help, and then it makes you that much stronger because you're able to actually share from that space of yeah, I've actually conquered this, and it doesn't mean that that you still don't have good days and bad days um, because you you right, will. Right. But the reality is, I think that there are probably many domain investors. Uh, brokers, developers um, that likely struggle with depression for a multitude of reasons. You know, I know it can, uh, I was actually uh, speaking with someone about this in terms of just the industry in itself of it's the highs and the lows, it, the highs when you're making the sales, but the lows when things go, you know, silent, uh, radio silent to be, to be exact. And so, it's how do you get through the ebbs and flows of life? And it's like, it's like you said, when and where we have problems and issues, it's really acknowledging getting help. And then the the other side of that is even once we get help is being being willing and open and vulnerable to share. So I definitely uh, appreciate you for sharing that. Thank you. So, uh, so the reason I mentioned it is because my life has kind of turned from being a, you know, full on uh, crazy, you know, programmer, <laughs> entrepreneur, whatever, you know, I was so focused on just work, you know, from there, right. it's gone into, I, I've become more of a people person. I like interacting with new people. The person who was so reclusive, I used to, I used to um, not even answer, you know, people if they ask me like, you know, can we talk or I was very reclusive because I, I firstly didn't have time. I was a full-time mom for two small kids. And slowly I, I started realizing that, see, we have been put on this earth for a certain thing. If we, if we don't live our, uh, live our life to our complete potential, then it's a wasted life. You know, the, the totally. biggest waste in this, in this world is talent. You know, you're talented in so many things. God has blessed you in so many ways. So what do you do with what's given to you, right? You need to utilize it. You need to spread whatever positivity you can whatever solutions you uh, have uh, learned in your way you need to become a person who cares about other people you know so uh, i feel i feel my path has kind of turned towards that and i think that this entire depression topic is going to be also be one major chunk of it you know apart from domaining uh, i feel that um, i'm going to be more involved in helping people you know, get over this, uh, whatever mental blocks they have or whatever negative uh, negativities they deal with day in and day out. And of course, uh, what I was trying to tell you was that domaining actually kind of helps me because uh, when, when, uh, when sales are coming in and I'm not really fully focused on projects, I'm able to uh, reduce the number of projects I take. I'm able to give what I want to do more time, right? Uh. So... That's the beauty of domaining, you know, when you're earning enough to cover up your projects or whatever, whatever income you would be getting from projects, it kind of frees up your time, you know, you are able to uh, write, like, for example, I want to write. So if I'm not able to sit and write for three, four hours a day, then I, I would feel bad, right? So I'm not able to mm -hmm, write, mm -hmm. I'm not able to, it, it's all become even more, I've become even more a com uh, complex personality, but I enjoy this, you know, I enjoy being five different uh, <laughs> thing, juggling five different uh, things at the same time you know so it, it's a very happy place i am in Okay. Right. There's a bit of yeah. there's a bit of uh, harmonious melody in, in being able to to have a couple of things that are so far from one another yet related in the fact that they're tied to you um, that yeah. to a certain extent keep you sane. I mean, a lot of people ask me, how in the world do you produce content? You blog, you know, you, you produce a podcast, you domain invest, you develop, you, you know, there's just a number of things that I, that I'm capable of. And I tell people, I'm like, I need all of them. Plus I also love working outside. Um, I love landscaping and gardening. And yeah. so it, I also love, 
I all these different that. things. Yeah. So I feel I feel that the word that fits everything that we do is passion. I feel once you free yourself from uh, expectations that society puts on you and you kind of focus on what you can give society, I feel the passion automatically drives your life. Definitely. And, I, and it's certainly felt here just even in terms of of like you said, of, of what you're able to do and how you've been able to use uh, really domain investing, not as necessarily an escape as much of a, as a tool that has helped you to heal in, in certain areas of your life. And so that that is just phenomenal. Now, in terms of what, what's interesting to me is just hearing you say all of that and you come to the point of how it's made you more of a people person. So now, do you attend any of like the domain investing conferences? Because I know that there have been likely a few in the India area. Like, do you attend any of those or any sort of conference events like NamesCon or... We have, I have been attending the last two Namescon online. Even the last one I was, I had to be pulled in because I, I don't remember, you know, that this date to this date is <laughs> Namescon. So I, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I don't know what is the term for it, but I'm very muddle-headed. Yeah, so <laughs> until unless it's already there in my calendar that this is what I need to do. This is, you know, I'm not a very aware person, but what I meant by people person is I'm, I'm very interested in learning about people, how their lives is, what makes them tick, what is their passion, what do they want to do in their life? Whereas I was, I was just the pole opposite, you know, even my employees, I should never talk to them. I should never like figure out what are they actually good at? You know, if it's a designer, it's a designer, you know, if it's a, you know, give them the uh, requirements, you get an output. That's it, you know. So I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't a people person at all. You know? So, uh, so now it's, um, I think, I think I, this is one of the facets that I really like about myself now is that I'm able to talk to anyone and everyone, whether it's a person on the road to a prime minister, I don't think I will have any qualms about it. You know? So I feel if that's what, I'm directed towards, you know, talking and probably make, making some sort of a thing. I, I'm still looking for what, where exactly this is leading, but I can make out that I've shifted in so many ways, you know, the personality has totally shifted. And so in, in terms of now, in terms of domain investing, like, where do you kind of see yourself, I guess, moving towards, like, what's your vision? Uh, where do you see yourself going? See, domain investing, right now, it's it's just... I mean, it's kind of got, gotten mainstream into my business because I'm giving it time. I'm giving it dedicated time. Mm. I can I can call myself a domainer because I'm actually, <laughs> you know, I'm consciously putting in the effort. And I like, give my- me that title back now. I, I know <laughs> what it means. I, I'm willing to put I'm willing to, to don it. Yeah. But but see, at the same time, uh, I have this idea about teaching domaining because I oh. think I have. I have the knowledge and I have the capability of teaching and I have, uh, we have a plan for go domainer. Me and my friend, his name is Hitesh. I, I don't know whether you know him. Hitesh. Yeah. Through uh, urban yeah. skill, him, and, yeah, him so, and Jay. So he's also very uh, well-versed in talking and we thought that we'll be a good combination to actually teach domaining. But what's holding me back right now is I have not even made a five figure sale. Right. So, I don't feel like a like a domain of worthy of teaching, you know. So <laughs> I but, don't know why. But there, but there's so many different levels, though. You know, I mean, I mean, yeah. obviously there, there's eight figures, seven figures, six figure, five figure, four figure, three figures. Um, but the reality is, I think that even uh, one being number one, I, I look in and say there, there are many things that you can certainly, you know, be able to put your hat on in terms of uh being able to to step in and teach i mean one one thing is you know i always tell people all the time i'm like as long as you're a step further than the person that you're teaching you're always going to be a teacher um and so if you if you just learn to sell a 50 dollar domain well go find someone that hasn't sold a domain teach okay, them how so, to sell so, that 50 yeah so another interesting uh thing from my childhood would be i was a tuition teacher at even uh, at the age of 15 Oh I used to teach kids who have, who were three, four years younger to me. I used to teach them maths, you know. So it, <laughs> actually, the, there we one, go. One, one interesting goodness. thing, 
is my partner was actually my student my who wa- who was my partner like, i mean we split up in 2004 but <laughs> she she was one of my students so when she was in 10th i had finished 12th so i taught her for she was very bad in maths and she got 75 <laughs> out of 100 so she i think she can never ever forget how i taught her so <laughs> <laughs> wow. And and then and that's the, the and so I look at that and I go, you know, don't let not having a five figure uh sell stop you. I think that you you have a lot to offer and I think you'd be surprised in terms of um who you would find coming across your path and you being able to teach them just your life's journey um in addition to domain investing. Hopefully, let's see. Yeah. I, I don't know I don't know what I'm waiting for but you know well, I I I just I just feel that there will be one five figure sale and then I will you know <laughs> plunge well, in. Well whether there's a five figure sale or not <laughs> Anita needs to be teaching go you I'm like you you already said it what I mean you said it when uh you were like yeah I wanted a branding a naming contest and that connected yeah. you to squad help and so now I'm figuring out Anita's a teacher I'm like what are you waiting on go 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 like definitely get out there and teach you know the the world is awaiting there there are folks who honestly it's it's interesting I go there are folks who are likely wishing waiting and praying for an Anita to come along <laughs> Um, in their life. Um, and, and truly, you you have the expertise, you have that thing that someone else needs. Um, and that's, you know, and I say that to everyone, like we all have something that someone yeah. else out there needs. And right. if, if we don't, you know, we're, we're basically uh, not only robbing ourselves, but robbing uh, someone else. But I strongly encourage you i'm like yes please go teach please go teach thank you so much so sweet of you <laughs> so it'll uh you know you'll you'll make the world like you said a better place because of it um and because you did and so i certainly hope that you get that five figure sell but whether or not you do certainly make sure that your voice is is uh is heard um you know because that also touches on you know just another point uh, in, in regards to to having a more diverse, you know, industry, and, and not only, you know, from a person of color, but even from the standpoint of gender of, of you being a woman, like I look and say you being a woman of, um, of Indian descent, a background, there, there are likely little girls that are out there that are just waiting to see someone that they can identify with and say, Oh, yeah, like, if Anita can do it, surely maybe that means that I can do it as well. And so I certainly applaud you. Um, like I said, it, I can't wait to see where where things go just in your journey as, as a teacher. I'm going to go ahead and say it for you <laughs> um, as <laughs> okay. a teacher. See, domain what, you, investor. what you said, yeah, what you said about this uh, diverse thing about domaining is so beautiful. Like if you look at each domainer, you know, they come with so many different uh, knowledges, pockets of knowledges that they come from different industries, you know, so exactly. each of each, each of them, they find their niche, you know, they find their niche, they're able to, uh, the beauty of this industry is it's not like uh, thousands of people following one path, it's each person finding their own path, right? Exactly. That, that's, that's the beauty of this industry. Exactly. And sometimes our, our paths crisscross one another. And sometimes you know, they stay as far apart as the East is from the West, but never, you know, at some point we, we all kind of come to common ground, whether that's through NamesCon or some sort of conference or uh, through relationship of somebody knowing someone. So, yeah. So other than that, so wrapping up, I mean, like, what would be your advice? I mean, you have just decades of experience now as an entrepreneur. Um, You're, you're definitely approaching that decade of experience as a domain investor. And so, what would be your advice to someone that's starting in domain investing or even wanting to dip their toe into to being an entrepreneur? Like, where should they start, in your opinion? I feel the start should always be your passion. You know, what are you passionate about? If you, if you don't, if you're not really aware of what your passion is, what you can really thrive in, what sort of a, a field can, uh, you would do well in, you know, it's very difficult. And see domaining is so beautiful that it can it can be a layer on top of any field like you can be a musician and you can be a domainer and you uh, you can still have a portfolio of uh, domains that are related to music because you know what 
your uh, your people like you know what they would because we might not know it right the the even though we say that we have so much of experience we might not know what you know about your generation about your uh, culture or about your industry basically you know so or if you are in something like uh, really high tech robot robotics or something you know you read you read more uh, journals you read more news so you need to understand that you have to start small and and the uh, place where you'll probably thrive is where where you already have a lot of knowledge where you have gathered knowledge if you are a totally new new uh, person who has just finished college then of course it's easy for you to learn from a lot of domainers you can see what every person is doing but at the same time it's also easy to get your hands burnt because you you might be gathering knowledge and trying to duplicate other people's success without having actually a inner radar towards what you do best right, right. so that's one thing and i also feel that um, i mean as a person who is uh, sunk in a lot of money in domaining i know that <laughs> we can we, we can easily lose lose track of what we are doing you know we can get emotional about a auction or get emotional about a name and you know so there's a lot of learning but you need to understand that by is by uh, the point of the purchase is where you make the main decisions you know a lot of us we make uh, instant emotional decisions with the buys you know whereas if we wait <laughs> yeah when we wait for the buy when we know how to research we know how to compare similar domains you can see uh, you know you can see what is available suppose you are chasing a particular domain you can see something that is equally good or even better than that you know so i have found that many times if i'm looking at a domain i can actually dig up domains that are even better than it you know and and they'll be hand registered once you know so you need to have a lot of patience you need to have a lot of capability to understand what you're doing in domaining you know you can't just blindly follow some teacher who's just uh, telling you do this do this do this and you're going to be a big success that's there's no there's no real formula to success according to me you know there's a there's a lot a lot of hard work and w- what people say that you know you got lucky you know or, or they uh, tell rick that he's lucky or whatever you know see all of us might have been there but we never saw these things so right. the main thing is the main thing is hard work foresight and preparedness you know are you prepared for it like for example um, one thing that uh, really struck me in deepak's interview was when he says that he had the money at the point of purchase you know when he had the he had already collected some money to invest and when a really nice portfolio came he immediately purchased it because it's not that other people didn't have the money it's just that he was there at the he had the foresight and he had, right. he was he was prepared for that sale uh, for that purchase you know he was already prepared okay this this amount i have i'm going to invest it in a big portfolio and he got it he got a really fantastic portfolio and another thing i really uh, learned from deepak was the meaning of this opportunity cost like i never understood that the three years that i wasted not making a single sale is basically opportunity cost you know right. that's what i that's what i lost you right if i had flipped a few domains i would have picked up better names right even, right. even though even though i am not uh, unhappy with whatever i have i feel that uh, there's so much of room for improvement i could have done so much better right the fairy how many ever times it came uh, <laughs> knocking i wasn't uh, i wasn't ready to acknowledge it right so right. Uh, i feel i feel that um, uh, often times we come with a cup o- already overflowing kind of attitude that we know everything we know everything you know or i can pick up this i read a few articles and i know everything kind of right. so so i feel that we should always uh, approach not only domaining but any learning uh, thing with a cup half empty attitude you know a lot of people think cup uh, cup half empty means you're negative but i feel that when you sh- when you know that there's a lot you don't know then you're more susceptible to learning because i i still learn so many new things every every few days i'm i'm a virosh's reader actually you know i read and read and read and i don't know where all the knowledge is going to come helpful but you know i i read a lot and sometimes it clicks for me you know okay let me look at this domain let me let me look at this you know so i also feel one important tip i would say is as you're building your portfolio always keep you know maybe 20 percentage of the best names where your pricing is it's kind of a higher higher pricing you know you have kept mm. it at a higher range and you feel that okay one day this is going to uh, get me this price 
but 80% you should always be ready to negotiate and let go you know right Because if you if you think uh, that you have 100 uh, 100% good names and you're not willing to come down on anything then uh, it'll be difficult to be in a business where you're not able to generate cash flow you right. have to you have to have cash flow and you also have to have uh, an awareness for the opportunity cost you know so if you sell something for that is uh, could have uh, got you uh, 5000 uh, $5, within 5 years but you're getting $2000 today you can always think about what you can do with a thousand dollars suppose you're oh, going to totally. keep you're going to reinvest 50 percentage of whatever you got you know you can always look look at and i i i in general i uh, i always have a, a few domains that i can purchase if i have a sale today you know so uh, you, you're kind of prepared for what you're going to do you're not just jumping into whatever auction comes up you know? right so, yeah i feel that uh, because i uh, initially i sold very fast you know i quickly uh, got success i i kind of became blind to the possibility of growth you know so i was uh, kind of just stuck in my own this one and only, it took me 3 years to realize that i'm sitting on a portfolio that is not worth much according to the current uh, current market of course there were there were good names but i was only I, how do you say yaar you identify with only the good names you're not right. looking at all all the trash you're having so <laughs> so i have a policy where uh, when when you said no the renewable mon- monster is coming along right so i i drop two names or three names and i pick up one good name so it's not a complete loss for me you know so i i i never look at it as a loss i look at it as an upgrading of my portfolio yeah even if i've renewed it for four years and you know and i have a, i get this feeling that this is never going to sell you know maybe it's never going to sell even 500 so I, i happily drop it then so and that gets picked up <laughs> <laughs> no that may that makes perfect sense and i think we all have to have to come to to especially that like that last tip of just there there comes a point in time when you just have to kind of let go um because like you said the the it's costing you more to hold and you could actually let go and realize a different opportunity cost for something else that then actually sells and so it's like no it's a, it's a great trade off that you let three or four domains go that you know for all intents and purposes it's like okay well listen if i let four domains go and that's $400 but i was able to purchase one and sell it for 1000 i'm like well, let the four go so that you can actually realize profit you know versus you know staying in the red it's like hey let's get to black as fast as as uh as we can so that makes perfect sense so last but not least is there anything else that you'd like to share with listeners so if somebody listens to this and they say hey i want to get in contact with anita how might they do so i am anita walker on all the platforms i am anita ah, walker i am so got gotcha. you <laughs> I was like yeah. I was like yes you are Anita Walker but no you're saying <laughs> <laughs> the actual words I am Anita Walker is your yeah, handle. Yeah so I I actually uh, one advice I would like to give everyone is if you really think I mean really believe in yourself one day you're going to be a really impactful person please register your full name.com because Yes. I I I made the mistake of not taking anitawalker.com when it was available and I waited 12 years to register it finally. You know, someone finally dropped it and I registered it last year. So I have Ooh, anita congrats. walker. Congrats. <laughs> yeah. It took a Which while, is, but congrats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I I I still know a lot of people even though they've got complicated names their .com is not available. You know? mm. So Yeah. And, yeah. and mine's a, mine's a very common name in the especially in the west right <laughs> right right yeah definitely um uh, walker is a walker is as well as brown i mean are common common yeah. surnames and so uh and then like i said with anita i mean there's not i mean of course you could get really creative with how you spell it but the common spelling yeah your name is very you have a uh a first name and last name that are very common Exactly. And, it, and I don't have one email ID which has Anita Walker. Not one email ID, you know. Really? I mean I mean the ge- general ones, the Yahoo, Google this that I never I was never able to get Anita Walker at a generic uh, pro- email provider. Huh. Email provider 
Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, you name it. I, I just couldn't get anything. Even even Medium, which is a blogger's this one. So right. even even there, I couldn't get an interwoker. I had to take something else. So Wow. So with that, Anita, I mean, we're out of time. So thank you again for joining us today and sharing your entrepreneurial and your domain investing journey. Thank you so much, Alvin. Lovely talking to you. Certainly. And thank you listeners for tuning into Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or Podbean. Last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks. And that's all for now.